And then they said, the aristocrats. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw murder on the Orient Express. Yes, we did. Uh, I think I liked this film more than you did, but uh, I had some problems with the end, so... I, I enjoyed the, the first part of the movie. Mm -hmm. It was quite good, and then it was like murder on the Orient Express. It totally murdered itself. <laughs> the, the problem, the first act was really good. This is one of those films, this weird weird thing, the second act of the film was the best part of the movie. The, the, the bulk middle of the film was great, but uh, it, and I know it's based on a book and you have to be faithful, and it, it, for the most part it was. There was some changes, but not anything significant. Yeah. Um, like in in the book when he interviews everybody it's always it's all in the same room so I mean if, as a filmmaker you can't really yeah um too much star power on screen together all at once yeah you gotta you gotta change things around but yeah. um it didn't know as a movie a book can just keep on going and going you know but a movie this movie didn't know when to end yeah so the last like 20 minutes it kind of fell apart because it just kept going yeah, I, I didn't think it was ever going to end. <laughs> yeah, so they, they kind of fucked up in the end. It felt like almost like a different director came in for the third act. But Yeah, it really did. I'm, I'm still going to give the movie a, a good review. I still recommend it. We paid six bucks for it. It's absolutely worth six dollars for the acting alone. Yeah, the, it had some great actors in it and actresses, and the acting was spectacular. But, and it didn't keep you, like, guessing the whole time, like... You you got a lot of different people that totally could have did it, and mm -hmm. it makes you know that hey, that that might be the person, that might be the person. And that's good directing because I've read the book. I, I like Agatha Christie novels. I've read a lot of her books, yeah. uh, and I really en enjoyed the 1974 version of the film. Um, I read, I heard somewhere on somebody else's film review that uh, Agatha Christie was still alive when that one came out. Uh, the book was, came out, I believe, January 1st, 1934. I believe it came on the wow. first day of 1934. That's how old it is. And her complaint about that movie was that um, Hercule Poirot's uh, mustache wasn't fl as flamboyant as she had written it. <laughs> so the director of this movie took that to heart. Because that he mustache... Did have an awesome mustache. That mustache was fantastic. It was, my, it was my favorite character in the movie. Yeah, he, he was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, as soon as it started, like, yeah, I like this guy. Mm, <laughs> Look that was, at that mustache. And that's Kenneth Brown, <laughs> the guy that directed it. He, the direction of the film was excellent. Yeah. I mean, it was a beautiful film. It just really kind of fell apart in the end. But even, like, the closing five minutes were okay. But they're, like, the beginning of the third act, it was like... Yeah. But I have to say, as it's a sign of a good director. I've read the book. I've seen another version of the film. And I still felt suspense through yeah. parts of this film even though I knew what happened in the end it, it was well made mm -hmm. it really was it just uh, from from the way it started to the end it just dropped off so bad like uh, it didn't keep the tone come on yeah cause it was a, I like a movie that's a slow pace but still keeps you interested and that was the first two thirds of this movie and then they tried to like have too much going on in the, yeah. third, in the third act of the film but uh, I don't yeah. want to shit on the movie too much because it's better than a lot of things we've seen this year <laughs> yeah I, I prefer this over Transformers or Mummy any day no, I, I'm not uh, disappointed at all no like it it was worth the watch could have been better but yeah um, funny uh, rumor that I don't know if it's true but I read this on the internet somewhere so it doesn't mean it's true but well, if it's on the internet it has to be true um, <laughs> apparently because Johnny Depp wanted to really get into character for the role apparently he actually stayed drunk on the set <laughs> and so he was drunk awesome. actually legitimately drunk on bourbon <laughs> while he was like delivering his lines and if you're not a Johnny Depp fan and I am I like Johnny Depp I admit he's done some terrible movies but I still I'm just like in Mordecai that's a terrible movie but god I yeah, love him in it Johnny Johnny Depp's awesome, man. Um, and I, I still like Jack Sparrow. I don't give a shit what anybody says. But if you don't like Johnny Jack Depp... Jack Sparrow's the best. Like, how could you not like him? He's just ridiculous drunk pirate. He's <laughs> fucking awesome. But he's, he's not in the movie for long, but he gives a really good performance for yeah. the brief time that he's there. Yeah, he was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. 
I liked uh, William Defoe's character. Oh, he, he was so delightfully racist. <laughs> he was the kind of racist that you like having around because he's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> and when he was like going on that racist tirade where he did like a 30 second thing where he insulted like 10 different cultures, I'm like. That was hilarious. And it's Willem Dafoe doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody could have did that better than he did. That was that was really good. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, it was fun. Mm -hmm. it, it was a good movie. I'd I'd say go see it for sure. Yeah, this this will be another one of those cases of I won't buy it the day it comes out, but when it goes down in price, I'll I'll pick this yeah. up on Blu-ray for, for like fifteen bucks or less. Yeah, I'd I'd watch it again mm -hmm. all the way. Yeah, yeah, it was entertaining. I mean, it like I said, it fucked up it there at the end. I mean, you could tell that the director was the main character because man, did he take that one scene <laughs> way too long? He just stretched it out forever. Oh my god, he, and it's wonderful acting. It's yeah. just the writing. It just was like, oh my god, shut up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, overall, I like. I mean, and I guess there's not going to be too many trailers to talk. We only got one new trailer today. <laughs> That was for that Morgan Freeman movie. Oh, yeah. That looks so bad, but I think I have to see it. Yeah, that, that did look terrible, but fun at yeah. the same time. Tommy Lee Jones doesn't that, do a lot these days, so I'm glad to see him in another movie. It's it's on that, they've got a kick of old funny old man movies is like the thing. Mm -hmm. You just take all the famous people that are too old to do a good movie and throw them in something like, comedic and there you go and it, it worked in red i like the first red yeah movie. and this one looks fine it'll it'll be okay yeah. i wouldn't mind to see it um but um so we'll won't won't be much longer there's not much else to say i mean if you've read the book uh, you already know the story there's no real we're not going to spoil it but i've got plenty to say hmm. this fucking theater oh my god mm -hmm. you don't know what the fuck was going on I, I was like, is there a gas leak in here? I mean... Jeez, I've... We've had some, uh, some audiences, but this was just... Ugh, I don't know what. Some lady was blowing her nose for 15 minutes. I'm not like... Not even exaggerating, like, straight up. You know those people who can blow their nose and make it sound like a horn? It's, it sounded like a shot back. Like, shut the fuck up! And, ah. and there had to have been 20 people in there that all had little Debbies and were all opening them at the same time. Because <laughs> I just heard the crinkling of, of, of plastic wrappers for fucking an hour straight. It was like... <laughs> I know. I'm like, are you people doing this on purpose? Like, heard it all. One lady that just laughed way too <laughs> extremely loud at something that wasn't that funny. I know. Some, there were some legitimately funny fucking moments in this movie. Yeah. Mostly in the beginning, it, it took more of a serious tone, but in the first act of the film, there's some really funny yeah. moments. Like, the, the, the inspector has obsessive compulsive disorder, and some of the shit that he does is just yeah. fucking hilarious. It's, it's great. But yeah, the moment that was something that was just kind of huh, funny and the woman's in the back yeah, the only one <laughs> like oh my god <laughs> she reminded me of what, what is that on family guy is that a duck that goes ha <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! And then somebody, in the, like towards the end, something happened, and somebody I couldn't make it out, but they said something out loud, as loud as we're talking now. And like a couple of people told him to shh. Yeah. Uh, like, like shh. I think the, it, when it was over, he's like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what don't you get? This, the fucking guy spent. 45 <laughs> minutes explaining it. Like, there's not a single detail he left out. How could you possibly not get it? Like, <laughs> there's nothing to not get. <laughs> Jesus. And so, there, there were people coming in this shit a half an hour late. Yeah, it was like 20, we were well, like, yeah. the first, like, 25 minutes of the movie, they're in, they're in Jerusalem, and then they, they get on the train. There were people coming in towards like when they were getting on the yeah, train. Yeah, they, they missed were the first. To the train, like how could you? Why would you even go to this movie if it started at ten twenty and it's ten fifty? And, and this is a theater that has multiple showings of films. If, they, if I was them, I'd have been like, you know what? Let's go hang out in the food court for an hour or so, and we'll come. We'll see yeah, the next show. There's pro. I, 
there's probably not uh, one that. I bet the next showing was like eleven or eleven ten. I think it was like like, uh, like eleven forty five something like that. Yeah, one of the other theaters showing it. I, I would have totally went and got something to eat before I came in uh, thirty minutes late to a, a movie like this, where that you know that. You're you're gonna be missing something at that point. This isn't one of those theaters that's out in the middle of nowhere. This is attached to Northgate Mall here in Cincinnati, and right here, I mean, there's a McDonald's, a Taco Bell, a Burger King. Inside, there's a food court with a Gold Star. Everything you, know? you can want. Do a lap around the mall. I'll take you an hour. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> go, Best Buy's right over there. Go, yeah. go to Best Buy. I, yeah, I don't. I didn't get that. Like, I get when people like the opening minutes of the movie, like they just got their skin of their teeth, like with you at Annabelle Creation. Yeah. But like, man, yeah, like got in, I might have been five minutes late. You were two, you two minutes is pretty much was it. Was yeah, minutes. like like I can see that. Okay, the concession line took too long or something. You're strolling in right the, the last possible minute. You're still not going to uh, miss so much that you don't understand what's going on. Got to put my glasses on. I know there's a glare, but I get a headache sometimes when I leave them off for too long. And the theater was pretty dark. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so... Uh, Decent movie, shitty audience. Well, I can't even say shitty audience, but it was just one of the most unique audiences. Yeah, it was a definite uh, different audience than what I'm used to seeing. But uh, next week, um, uh, the movie that we're going to be seeing, I, I, I had a, a, a thought come to me. You know, before we go into what we're going to see next week, is uh, I had this idea for a brand of beer. Okay, I'm going to call it Zwayne Beer. S W A I N. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> it's gonna be called Swain Beer, and I'm gonna—that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get really famous as this this famous beer maker. So when people, I go into a room and people are like, I think I know that guy. I'm like, dude, what do you do? I can look at them and say, Bruce Swain. <laughs> that's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a joke that can only work on them when you have to deliver, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Took the glasses off and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Because next week is Justice League. <laughs> yep. Superman Returns. Yeah, it come that's probably what we even <laughs> joked about that, but we're going to really, like, spoiler alert, Superman's back. Yeah. Who the fuck doesn't know? He's actually been on some of the Comic-Con panels now, because they're not even, they're like, whatever, people know. They fucking spoiled it in the 10 million trailers they've already shown where they show Superman is back. Yeah. It's not a surprise. If you're trying to surprise us, we're not surprised. We know Superman's back. We're comic book nerds. We know Superman dies. Guess what? Superman doesn't stay died. He comes back to life. The only, like I was pissed. At the, the, I agree with the critics of Batman vs Superman that, the, that they they crammed one of the greatest comic book storylines of all time into 20 minutes at the end of the movie. I loved Batman vs Superman until like the end. And I know a lot of people have problems with it, and I I get the problems. I I'll defend Man of Steel more, but then I'll defend Batman yeah. and Superman. Um, it wasn't the worst of all time, though. Like I say, no, it was but not that bad. I, I, if they, if they're gonna do Death of Superman, I, I seriously hope we get the real Return of Superman storyline where the four different Supermans came back. That'd be cool. But yeah, if that happens, then I'll excuse the end of, of B BVS. Or I, you can it's not it's Batman v Superman like the, the, nobody accepts verses it's Batman v Superman yeah Batman five Superman <laughs> Dawn of Justice League the prequel but we all know it's just gonna be Wonder Woman two if they, they, they're smart they'll make it that way because yeah. like the other two movies were critically like kind of eh, Suicide Squad people were kind of half and half on that one but fucking everybody loved Wonder Woman Yeah. the it, only people who didn't like Wonder Woman were the super chauvinistic men that cannot stand the idea of a woman yeah, being a superhero stupid yeah just assholes because it was an awesome movie I thought, uh, I, I've seen it six times now yeah I don't care if you if you're a woman hater or not Wonder Woman kicked ass mm -hmm. I hope I hope they realize how good she was at directing Linda Linda uh, Jenkins was in that movie. I think it was her name. I, I might be Patty Jenkins. I'm sorry, Patty Jenkins, that directed the film. And I hope with uh, uh, Justice League Two, they bring her into co-direct because I think that cool. would that would be good. Yeah. All right. Well, we're not even talking about. We'll, we'll talk about Justice League next week when we see <laughs> Justice League. 
Um, <laughs> but it's got the flash in it. It's got that uh, aqua guy that's the wrong guy. Yeah. It's I, got, you know, Batman might be in it a little bit. <laughs> You know, he's old and he's crazy and, like, nobody cares about Batman anymore, so he might not even be in the movie hardly. Well, Ben Affleck is having a lot of personal problems. But his Batmobile will be. (laughs) CGI Ben Affleck will be in there. He might just be in, like, the cave just remote controlling his Batcar around. (laughs) I'd still pay to see that. I would, too. All right. We'll be back next week with Justice League. Let's hope they don't fuck this one up. They better not. Yeah.